Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use Excel to store information in tables. If you used Excel 2003, the tables were called lists for some reason. These two terms refer to the same objects, however, they're simply being referred to properly as tables now. An Excel table is simply information stored in a table format. This simply means that the different types of information that you want to collect are stored in columns, which are often called fields in database terminology, and each column or field contains a separate type of information. Examples could be first name, last name, title, address, city, state, and so forth. Each row in the table is called a record. A record is a single entry in which you record each type of field information about one thing in your database. So for example, using the fields that we just mentioned, a record in that table might contain the information John Doe, Mr. 111 Nowhere Lane, Holt, and Michigan. So in a table there can be no entirely blank columns or rows. Anytime you leave an entire row or column blank, Excel assumes that that's the end of the table. Therefore, any records that you enter below the skipped line or after the skipped column will not be treated as if it were part of the same table. Now before you create a table in Excel, you need to consider what information you want to collect. Sometimes it's easier to think of what fields to create after thinking of the subject of the table first. So for example, if you wanted to create a table to record customer data, you would need to think about what information you want to collect about your customers. The types of information that you decide to track will become the fields or columns in your table. For the purpose of the example, assume that you decided to record your customer's name, address, city, state, and zip code. When thinking of the field structure of the table, you need to consider just how detailed you want to be with the customer's information. Poor decisions in the planning phase can be problematic later. So for example, do you want to record the customer's name in one field or in more than one field? If you ever want to sort the database by the last name of the customer, you will probably want to store the customer's name in at least two fields, first name and last name. Noting little things like this during the creation process can save time in editing the table structure later on after it becomes a problem. Once you've decided what information you would like to record in which field, you enter the titles of these fields at the top row of your table. The top row in your table is a special row and is often called the field names row or the header row. It's always the top row in a table and it displays the names of the fields for which you are collecting data. Now once you have the header row created, you can click and drag over the header row and then define it as being a table. This will make some of the table management features of Excel easier to do. So to do this, after selecting the header row, click the table button that appears in the tables group on the insert tab in the ribbon. In the Create Table dialog box that appears, you will see the reference to the selected cells appear in the Where is the Data for Your Table text box. You simply check the My Table Has Headers checkbox and then click the OK button. This will then create the table area within the worksheet and add a new row into which you can enter your first table record. If you have clicked into the table area, you will note that each field in the header row has a drop-down button applied to it. These are auto filters, which are used to filter data in the table. We will look at using those in a later section. You will also notice that the table has a different formatting than the rest of the worksheet area. This table style encloses any records that you want to identify as being part of your table. Note that you can place your mouse pointer over the lower right corner of the table until you see a double-pointed black arrow appear. You can then click and drag with your mouse to resize the table border if needed. However, don't enclose any entirely blank rows or columns, as you probably don't want a bunch of empty columns or rows stored in your table. 
This can interfere with sorting and filtering the data that you do want to do within the table. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.